All right, today we are joined by Simon Watson of Watson Strength Equipment. Uh, they're an equipment company based in the United Kingdom, best known globally for their Watson Pro dumbbells with the rotating thick grips and the end plates that are customizable with logos or even sayings and other iconography. Uh, Watson, uh, so we're joined by the actual founder of the company, Simon Watson, who started the company uh, the story I keep seeing from you and around is with your own little welding kit and you got started and ever since then it's just been growing and growing and you're in the process now of building and opening up a, a new uh, manufacturing factory. Yes, exactly. So um, thanks, Tony. Thanks for having me on. It's good to be here. Uh, yeah, I started the company back in 1999. Um, I always wanted to do something for myself. Always wanted to run a business. I like the idea of, of um, having my own business. Uh, my mum had her own business, um, but it just seemed like the the thing that I wanted to do. So from kind of from 16 onwards, I was I was trying to think um, what business to go into. Um, all the time, I loved training. From school, I'd I'd always be um, in the gym at lunchtimes training. Uh, and then literally one morning, I suddenly had the idea to build uh, gym equipment. And that's how it started. That was back in 1999. Uh, I got the idea. And from that moment, um, all I could think about was how to get set up and get running. I didn't, I didn't plan anything. I didn't, um, I didn't really think any further than just making the first few bits of kit and, and hopefully selling them and hopefully making a bit of profit. So, um, I'd love to be able to say I did a business plan and kind of you know, scaled out what I was going to do over the years, but it was literally a day-to-day -day thing. I just wanted to, I just wanted to get that feeling of, of designing something, building it, and then actually seeing somebody pay for it and use it and, and seeing the benefits they get from it. So, um, so yeah, back back then I searched around, I found a tiny, uh, tiny unit, and actually knowing I was going to be on this call with you today, I dug out some old photos and I found a photo of the very first, this is my very first unit. And you can, you can see on there the little uh, welding, first welding kit I bought. Um, so I set up really, really cheaply and just, um, just start made, started making a few bits and bobs. And um, it, for me, it was pre-internet days. So, um, so I put an ad in Exchange and Mark magazine, which we have in the UK. It's like for selling um, pretty much anything back then. I put a tiny four line ad in there and um, just started, started picking up some calls and getting to know local gyms and um, very slowly started building things up. That's always a good way to, to hear is how people kind of get themselves started. So far, it seems like every equipment company kind of starts out the exact same. A guy in a, who loved working out, wanted to make something, enjoyed it, got something put together, sold it. Next thing you know, now they're a multinational company, but it's all the small little steps along the way that got them from, oh, I just put this one piece of kit together to now we put more pieces of kit together in a week than I did in the first five years type of thing. It's always nice hearing and seeing that. So the vast majority of coaches uh, that are going to see this are going to kind of will have come across Watson Strength Equipment all primarily because of one French Canadian man, Charles Poliquin. So how did you and Charles end up actually collaborating together and getting kind of Watson Strength Equipment, particularly the dumbbells, more widely spread like they have become in the last, especially five years, it seems? Yeah, well, I, I met Charles, I think it must have been around 2007 um, through uh, Tom Crudgington. I don't know if you know Tom Crudgington. He's got a body development gym in Bath, local to me. So I knew Tom. Tom was doing one of Charles's courses in London at the time. And Tom said, why don't you come up and, and meet Charles? And I'd obviously heard of Charles. Um, was kind of scared of him from what I'd, what I'd heard, but was excited to go and meet him. So I popped up to London. Um, met him very briefly. Uh, talked about some talked about some bars that he wanted made, some um, specific bars he wanted. 
so we did some little sketches and I went away from that meeting um, um, just kind of ready to make these bars and then the next day or a couple of days later Tom Tom spoke to me and he said that Charles was really impressed with what you're doing and he's keen to um, call you and speak about some other projects and bigger projects so um, I was excited about that obviously um, he was going to call me on a certain day so I was ready with my phone and a, a notepad and I remember I was, I was just about to walk into a supermarket and the phone went and I saw the, um, the, the 707 number, so recognised it as a, a US number. Um, and, and Charles started speaking as, as he did, you know, really quickly speaking away. And the phone was cutting in and out and I just I was losing what he was saying and I was trying to make notes and panicking. And, I, should I, I don't want to, and it went on and on. I didn't want to say to him, sorry, Charles, can you say all that again? So I was just trying to grab what information I could. Um, so that was like the first proper kind of few communications with Charles. And from, from there, and this was all around the time when I was looking at us making our own dumbbells because I was, I was fed up of um, buying dumbbells in from um, other manufacturers. So... I had this idea of making just standard heavy duty dumbbells we produce in house. He then put me onto the idea of making them really something completely different to what I had in mind, um, with, which I did. I went along with. wasn't totally convinced, but I thought Charles is saying this. It's got to be. It's got to be some uh, weight behind it. So, so started producing these dumbbells, and immediately the, the, the help I got from Charles was. Was incredible because he he put me on to potential customers and because Charles had recommended these dumbbells to them it was a, a very qualified lead making it a, a very easy sale and that really got the dumbbells off the ground I often wonder if um, if I didn't have that kickstart if I'd have been able to build momentum to get them really going because it's quite hard to um, especially dumbbells there's so many people making dumbbells it's, it's hard to come up with something different and really really get it out there in the market but Charles gave me a, a massive head start with that um yeah and I was always in, enjoyed my time with Charles he was just such a great guy such a um his sense of humor was amazing um so he he helped me he helped me through business and all sorts of things, but also helped me with um, his book recommendations. He always had the most incredible uh, book recommendations. The, the first book he ever recommended to me was called The Pumpkin Plan, which um, that, that's one of the most influential books I'd, I'd read. It really changed the way I did things. So it's, it's all about really um, focusing down on your, on your key things, this classic 80-20 getting rid of all the clutter and just focusing on uh, what you enjoy and what you're good at. And um, that book really got me, got me focused on specialist strength, cutting out everything else that I was selling at the time. Um, Cause in the early days I was selling everything I could, gym related treadmills, bikes and all sorts of things. So I cut all that out and just got very, very focused. Um, so yeah, Charles, Charles helped me in many, many ways. All right, so that's actually a great segue right into a question that someone asked me to ask you was, in the market today, we see, the only way to describe it, Watson Pro Dumbbell knockoffs. Uh, so the question that I was asked to ask was, how do you at Watson plan to continue to innovate and stay ahead of the curve? Um, or at least be the trailblazer making the curve? We're listening to customers and being prepared to change for customers. You see so many companies that are so focused on what they're doing and then trying to push that on the customer um, rather than just listening to what people want and, and changing what they're doing. Sometimes we've had to totally disrupt the way we do things to, to make changes to suit the customer. But um, I think as long as you're prepared to do that, you can always stay, um, stay ahead of the game. Um, in terms of a lot of other people producing similar dumbbells, yeah, there's there's loads now. Um, I think we've got to the point where we've built huge trust with our brand and and pe people realize our lifetime warranty is a lifetime warranty. We've been 22 years now, we're, we're a strong company, we're, we're not going anywhere. So 
we'd be here to honor that. Whereas a company that's been around a year and is offering a lifetime warranty maybe doesn't doesn't carry the same the same regard. But um, the other thing we um, I mean, I've invested massively over the years in in technology and machinery that allows us to make things very, very efficiently. So then we can put that money we've saved into raw materials. And the, the dumbbells are a great example because we make our dumbbells from stainless steel. As far as I know, there's nobody else apart from, I think, um, uh, Black Iron Strength in, in the US. Nobody else, apart from them, nobody else makes uh, dumbbells from stainless steel. And there's massive advantages with stainless steel, despite what people say who don't use stainless, um, because any form of coating on a mild steel will wear out. It, it, would, it would look good initially, and then it will wear out. Stainless steel is there to stay forever, you know? It's, um, and the, the cost of the stainless is about three times the cost of mild steel. So when you look at the, if somebody buys a, a set of 10 to 50 kilo dumbbells, the price they pay for it, about 60% of that is actually in the stainless. So they're getting actually incredible value, although they're not the cheapest dumbbells. Value is, is pretty amazing. And if, um, if one day suddenly nobody was allowed to have dumbbells and everything had to be scrapped, you would get pretty much 60% of your, what you spent on your dumbbells from the scrap man, whereas um, uh, all the other dumbbells are kind of worthless. So, um, so yeah, we, are, we offer a really good value. And I think that, keeps us where we are now, people recognize that. Yeah, and the thing that you mentioned there was kind of having that trust. Your equipment is in the only global personal training business in the world, UP, owned by Nick Mitchell. So that's a pretty incredible kind of like client or customer to have to repeat business because every time he opens a gym, it's almost standard. Everyone knows what dumbbells, what plates, what everything is going in there. And each time you have something kind of unique for them when it comes to their end plate designs, you get it right down to, okay, the color might be a little different on the end plate or the lettering is a little different. But going from the Mark I dumbbells to now, the first sets of the Watson Pro dumbbells were kind of like, pieces of steel kind of welded together and now it's evolved into one long or one solid piece on each end. Mm -hmm. So can you take us through the process of how you re-engineered them? Well, well, initially the very first set we did, we weren't producing in-house. We, we um, subcontract the, the plates and back then they weren't mild steel, they weren't uh, stainless steel. So um, it was playing around with different ideas and the the most obvious way of making them was in a way that traditional pro plate dumbbells were made. So we'd machine, instead of having cast pro plates, we'd machine them and then build them onto a bar um, and kind of bolt them together using the three bolt design. And it, that, it, it kind of worked, it, it worked okay, but it just never quite looked the way I wanted, even the way initially the end plate would sit on the outside of the outer billet rather than being recessed into the billet. So there was all little tweaks along the way. It, um, I think now we're on about a 12th major tweak of the dumbbells getting, getting to where they are, where they are now. But um, yeah, it was just a very gradual evolution of, of um, just finding what worked, what worked in, in terms of how they looked, but also for, for us to produce. Um, some of the early ones, they were actually one billet, but they looked as if we actually specifically machined grooves in them to make them look as if they were, to, to look as if they were um, made up of various different billets. Um, and then a big step was moving away from that to give that kind of cleaner look they've got now. Um, so yeah, we're just, just constantly evolving and, and tweaking them and improving them along the ways. But um, it was a big learning curve, um, yeah, but, but interesting and fun to do. And I think it was um, it was about five years ago we moved over to stainless. So um, um, realized there was going to be a huge price difference in, in the, the raw material. But then we weighed that up with um, 
having to machine the billets, send them off um, for us up to Birmingham in the middle of the UK to get nickel plated and then come back to us. And sometimes there'd be something missing, they'd, they'd gone astray and almost putting us back to square one of, you know, relying on other people's dumbbells. So, so we thought going the stainless route is, the, is definitely the way to go, is whether, whether we could justify the, the cost. Um, so initially we took a big hit on the profit we made on them. Um, and obviously with business, we need to be making profit to keep growing and reinvesting. Uh, so we took a big hit on the profit, but over the years, as we've become, we become more efficient at manufacturing them and also the volume of stainless steel that we buy is, is vast now. I mean, we buy a huge amount of stainless steel. So the price we're buying at is, is way cheaper than anyone else would be able to get them for, to get, to get the uh, raw billets for. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, just, um, it's just kind of evolved over the years into what they are now. Okay, so we've talked about your most famous product. Recently, you released a new stainless steel product. Your, I'm not sure if the term for them would be the pro steel plates, but you recently released Olympic plates. So what gave you the idea of machining and creating your own plates, which are also having branded customization on them as well? Well, people have asked for years and years um, for, for weight plates. Um, Charles as well had mentioned weight plates. Ben Pikowski said about weight plates. Um, we do a lot of work with Soho House Group. Um, I don't know if you've heard of Soho House. It's a private members club. It's all over the world, quite a fast growing um, group of clubs. So um, they really, really wanted, they're very specific on their branding and really wanted plates to match the dumbbells. Um, and the thing that was kind of stopping it was actually machining them because a, a 450 diameter weight plate, you, you need a really big machine to, to produce that on. Um, not just big in terms of cost, but physical size. You know, it's a huge machine, uh, a big investment and something I wasn't 100% would take off in the way the um, dumbbells did. But we, we gave it a go just before Christmas last year. Um, I bought the machine and um, had it all planned out how we were going to do it. And we are now um, producing them and the machine's running flat out. They, they take a long time to make. So um, we, we kind of limited how many we can produce. I think it's, um, we're producing about 20, 25 kilo plates a day or equivalent. So about 20 plates a day are coming out of the factory, which isn't huge. So once we've got our new factory built, we're gonna add another machine and step that up. But uh, I'm really happy with the plates. They, they look incredible, I think, stainless steel again, uh, super, super thin. Um, but again, the first prototypes I made, I put some social media posts out and everyone said about um, having no way of gripping them because the first prototype was just a smooth plate. You had the recessed um, um, logo plate in there, but the outer part of the plate was all smooth. So then re-engineered it, changed it to have this groove we put in there, which adds about another seven minutes to the machining time. Um, but it is better. It's, it, it is better. Um, and, and Things like that as well. Obviously, the, the thing with stainless steel is expensive. So anything you're machining away and is being scrapped, although you get money for scrap, that is money lost. So you, you try and keep the billet you buy in, you try and keep as close as you can to that and not machine away too much to be um, sold back as, as scrap. But um, yeah, the plates match the dumbbells really well. Um, indestructible, very happy with them. And um, I th I think everyone who's bought them so far is, is very pleased with them too. Yeah, like they look they look incredible. It's really the only way to put it from the initial post that you're putting out on Instagram through to the final products that you're actually now send, sending out to gyms. And it's also good for people to understand why when you're buying equipment from Watson, it's not costing how much, it's costing you a lot more on that purchase than it is if you just go through a budget brand. But the reason behind it, as we were just saying, you're only producing 20 
25 kilo plates for those of you on the uh, pound system, that's 55 pounds per day. It's not like you're just having a massive assembly line of them coming out where you've got hundreds or thousands of them coming out daily. You've got a small number coming out and just putting that single groove in into it so that you can actually grab onto the plate. You even said that's an additional seven minutes. So mm -hmm. all of this gets factored into how much equipment costs. When you're using stainless steel and then it's branded, it looks great inside of a gym. It looks great for branding a gym, marketing ourselves as trainers or gyms. It's something, it's an added nice little perk or uh, aesthetic appeal to our facilities. And as we're coming out of the pandemic, hopefully, as we all like, you're hoping that this is kind of over the hump of it, is boutique gyms, I think, are going to be what actually takes off because of all of this because people are going to want to be in a place that's less crowded less people and if we have a product that looks really good it makes it a lot easier to sell someone on why they're paying more just to come to our facilities as opposed to going to the big box gym where they pay 50 bucks 50 pound whatever the currency is roughly 50 seems to be the going rate for their memberships so what other equipment would you say you at Watson are best known for? So apart from the dumbbells and weight plates, we're um, pretty well known for our leg machines, specifically the, um, the animal leg press is a very popular machine of ours. Um, our hydraulically adjustable hack squat is a um, very popular machine and our vertical leg press. So leg machines very well, very, very well known. Um, we obviously make a whole range of machines and and there's always machines that I know I've, I've got them that then there's always improvements there's always things I, I do designs myself so there's always things I'm doing to tweak and, and update designs and make them constantly better using people's feedback but there's also machines that I know need work and so I'm I've always got a list of next on you know, next on the agenda machines, which um, I just want to in, improve and, um, and and kind of advance up to the level of the, um, the dumbbells and the plates. But certainly uh, our leg machines, specialist bars, very popular. A lot of our specialist benches, um, specific to certain exercises, are, are very popular. Um, at the minute, we're working a lot on our. Uh, weight stack machines, our selectorized machines. I feel they've they've not really been at the level um, of some of our other kit. So we've worked hard over the last year to improve those. I feel now they're they're a massive step forward um, from where they were. Um, ben Pikowski came over last year and spent a few days with me, which was really really valuable. Um, gave me some great feedback and um, and biomechanically ways to improve machines. So I've taken all that on board and we're, we're just constantly doing everything I can to, um, to, to improve things. And I'm always happy to do that. I'm, um, I'm certainly not stuck in my, in my ways of making things. And if a customer comes with a bit of a moan on something, that, that's good because then we can listen and, and um, use it to improve how we are. Okay, so from that, what kind of products and whatnot can coaches, gym owners be expected to see in the pipeline from Watson? That's always something that's good for people to also keep an eye out for if they're thinking, necessarily having been thinking about a certain piece of kit and then, or they've been looking for one that's good, such as your animal leg press. What other uh, main kit items are you currently developing that you think is going to be that next excellent product from you? One thing at the minute we're developing, which is uh, again one of Ben Pikowski's ideas, is a we've done a standing chest press, which is very popular, but this is a standing row where the bar's stationary and you're pulling yourself towards the bar. Um, plate loaded machine. Um, so you're stood in it, you've got a chest pad um, on front of you, and you're, you're with, with uh, free moving handles, uh, free rotating handles. 
you're, you're putting yourself towards the handles. So it's a standing row machine. It's something we've um, built some prototypes now and we're still developing and working on, but that should be ready fairly soon, I'm hoping. And then that sounds pretty interesting because we can changes to existing machines. I saw a video recently on a comparison of our um, pendulum squat to an Atlantis pendulum squat. And one of the comments was the foot plate angle. So we've recently redesigned that with an adjustable foot plate and some other tweaks as well. Um, so um, that will be available in a, in a couple of months time. See, and that's good that you don't just stick to, okay, we made this, we don't need to tweak it anymore. Just from seeing a video, you've already decided, we need to tweak this so that we can make ours even better than it was. And you even mentioned the other, another excellent product company in Atlantis, good old Canadian company. Mm, uh, so they make excellent equipment. There's no other way to put it. It's always high quality. But like all of these companies, though, at the same time, people, when they're purchasing the equipment they, or they're going to the gym, they think, oh, it's just steel. It's not like it's going to cost much. But there's so many steps behind what causes the product or the end piece of kit to actually have the price that it does, whether it's from the 3 by 3 7-gauge steel, 11-gauge steel uh, tubing being used, or in the case of a lot of your dumbbells, plates, and other weight, uh, products, they're calibrated. Mm. So what made you come to the decision of actually making stuff that's calibrated to the weight that it is? Because anytime we see calibrated, typically it's because it's IWF or IPF, but then you kind of came up with having other products that are calibrated in weight. Yeah, well, again, Charles, um, Charles insisted the dumbbells were calibrated. So, um, he, he got us onto that. And actually, when one of the benefits of producing very high-end um, stainless dumbbells is once you've set the CNC program to machine each billet at a very specific size, from then on, everyone you produce is exactly the same. When, um, when you use cast plates that are cast in a mold, the, for a given size, the weight will always vary. It, it will always be different every time. There's various air bubbles and things in, in there that's going to affect the weight. Whereas um, from solid stainless, it's very consistent. So once you've initially set everything up, once you've calibrated the weight of the end plates and the handles and, and everything else, and you've determined the billet sizes, which you program all into the machine, once they're in there, it's set. So that, that side of it, once it's done once, um, is fairly, fairly simple. But it was, yeah, it was Charles that initially got us onto that. And then we, we rolled it out with um, a lot of other products we're doing. Oh, I had no idea about that when it came to the white cast iron. There's always, especially when you get your regular Olympic cast, uh, cast steel Olympic plates, they can vary in weight by almost a couple of pounds. You get a 45 pound plate, it could be 43 yeah. pounds, it could be up to 48 pounds. Yeah. I had no idea, it was just because of. Uh, some air bubbles. I thought it was just change as they were the taking it out of the various mold. Things, various reasons um, can change the weight. Yeah. yeah. That's interesting. Would have never would have never thought that. So we've talked about the products. We've talked about Watson. Uh, we've talked about the company more so. Now let us know a little bit about the person you behind it and what keeps you constantly moving forward with pushing to make better products, pushing to get it so that people know Simon Watson is also a human being behind Watson Strength Equipment. Well, I, I love what I do. I love this job. It's, it's really exciting to me. I love um, um, seeing the company grow and expand, but we don't just expand for the sake of it, we're expanding because I want as many people as possible to experience our product. So we're, we're always looking at how many countries we're in and how many new customers we've got. Um, so what, yeah, what keeps me excited is in, in enjoying what I do. I'm still very, very hands-on in terms of the actual making, although I don't make stuff myself. 
I'm still doing all the drawings, all the um, designs I do myself. Um, I get excited about buying new technology and, and equipment that allows us to be more efficient. Um, building the new factory that I'm building now that's going to allow us to, to produce more and in, a, in a more efficient way. It's all these things I, I really love. I, I, I'm quite nerdy when it comes to um, engineering. Um, but I found it early on as well. I love the, uh, the business side of things, negotiating deals. I, I really enjoy um, dealing with suppliers. Don't get to deal with customers very much now, unfortunately. Um, but um, yeah, I just I love the whole business side of things and just, and just planning where we want to go and, and how we're going to get there. But it's all very, um, very customer focused. And, well, I, I take things very personally. If, if a customer isn't happy, I, I get pissed off and I'll, I'll be annoyed at whoever's made the customer not happy because it's, it's generally going to be something we've just done wrong. So, um, so yeah, I, I take things personally. I, I, I um, you know, just, just want to build a, an amazing company that offers incredible customer service. And I know sometimes as you grow, that can be difficult. I found that one of the hardest things is when I came away from dealing with everything all day to day myself, and you have to rely on other people to do it. It was hard because you, you know, if a customer's not happy, I couldn't, I couldn't sleep at night. Whereas somebody who works for you, although they're very, very good, they're never going to have that same feel and might not go as far as you need to, to make everything right. So we've had to, um, over the years, be very, very careful now who we employ, especially who we're employing, who's dealing with customers to make sure they do care. Um, because yeah, it, it would just drive me crazy otherwise. If knowing that as we grow and more people are dealing with customers, they're, they're letting people down, so um, that's been a hard, a hard thing to cope with finding good people. But I feel now we've got an incredibly strong team. Um, it was based in, in Froome, which is a very small town, so we're, we're limited on you know finding good people, so we've had to generally offer really good money to draw people in from other places um, to, to move in locally to work here. Um, yeah, we've, we've got a great team there and I'm, I'm happy with everyone here. Um, yeah, I, 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 I love my work. I really, really enjoy it. And one of my goals is always to um, still be 90 and coming into work still. So probably in a wheelchair or something, going around the workshop, see, seeing everyone, seeing what's happening. So, yeah, I enjoy it. And that makes it easy. When you enjoy what you do, so, it makes everything very easy. Yeah. So speaking of cus customers, uh, I think it was the 2015 or maybe the 2016, Arnold, Australia. You got yourself a very well-known, popular and very influential customer yourself by creating <laughs> a product specific to them. Uh, he's probably the most well-known person in the gym industry. He's gotten into politics. You actually got to meet and make dumbbells specifically for Arnold Schwarzenegger. So how was that for you being in the gym business, meeting a guy who started out as a bodybuilder made it big, became Conan, the Terminator. And then here you are presenting him with dumbbells of his own, customized with the Terminator face on them. Yeah, that, that was amazing. That was, that was really good. It was a carefully thought out plan. Uh, we'd been there the year before, didn't meet Arnold. I went into his talk and everything, and, but didn't actually meet him myself. So we said, right, next year, let's have a, a plan to draw him into our, our booth. Um, so yeah, we created these Terminator uh, dumbbells and made a nice custom stand. We put them on with um, with the silhouette of Arnold. It had kind of backlit in this stand. It, it looked it looked really good. Um, it was a great bit of kit. And then um, um, Tony, the owner, who I've kind of got to know, Tony Doherty, uh, we'd shown him before. Said, hey, look, we've got these uh, dumbbells here for for um, Arnold. So if you know if he could see them would be incredible. Um, if not, don't worry, we'll ship them out to him. Um, and I think it was on, on the last day, it was on the Sunday. 
Um, you always know when Arnold's coming, so there's this big kerfuffle and there's people <laughs> everywhere. So and we could see see this big mass of people getting closer and closer to us, and we were like, this is it, he's coming over. And then saw him come over and um, yeah, introduced himself and had a good good chat with him, got some pictures, and he loved the loved the dumbbells, was really impressed. Uh, made him a cigar. Uh, uh, ashtray as well and um, a few other bits and and it was great so he we we then shipped those dumbbells to him which a few months later he auctioned off and made a load of money on for his charity and then we made him another set which he's now got in his um in his office um in in, in his office so yeah that was an incredible experience and from a marketing point of view very good as well having uh, pictures of arnold is with your dumbbells is obviously it's obviously great, but just for me, just growing up with with pumping iron and total rebuild and everything, it was it was really good to meet him. Yeah, because he's probably the person, regardless of what anyone says today about the current list of Olympians, Arnold is who inspired the majority of them to pick up a dumbbell. He's what inspired millions of people around the world to take their health a little more seriously. Mm -hmm. Yes, he's had heart surgeries, but he's still always putting out information and putting out the message to take your health serious, work mm -hmm. out. Uh, there's a famous Gold's Gym uh, video of him dressed up uh, as an employee, and he was having people do reps of drinking water, which was pretty <laughs> funny. So it's awesome seeing that, that you were able to get your product into the hands of the most, single most influential person in the entire industry. Because good. where Arnold goes, people will follow. So I, I love hear that story of how you ended up getting that to happen. So how is it that you plan on kind of keeping on with how your company is growing? How do you kind of plan on improving your relationship with current customers and then also getting it so that future customers become repeat and forever customers? Because well, now that Charles put away, that e that kind of automatic kind of referral isn't quite as much there anymore. So now it's hmm. I think it might be a little harder for you, but at the same time, the product I've used it, the product is quite possibly hmm. some of the best you're ever gonna find. Which to be honest, we do very very little marketing now I, I love marketing i'm really fascinated by marketing but we we hardly do anything now we our our issue is is producing enough kit at the rate we need our order book is always giving us about a four month lead time and around then it kind of settles if it gets higher than four months it it, it organically kind of drop people don't buy if it's more than that especially because so many customers are in australia or the us or whatever so they've got four months to wait for kids to be made and then another three months maybe ship time so it's, it's too long so um we're doing everything all the time to bring the lead time down but it generally as we get more efficient and quicker more just comes in I mean, it really does especially this last year because the um in the uk the home market has massively grown compared to what it was before. Commercially stayed the same. We haven't lost anything commercially, but the home market is massively built up. So our, our order book is, it, it's, it's always big. So um, yes, we don't actually do a huge amount to bring stuff in. Our, our order book at any one point is always around 60 to 70% return customers. And it, it pretty much has been from the start. It's always, Generally, people coming back, there's only 30-ish percent new customers at any one point on our order book. Um, we keep in touch in touch with customers very well. We try and ring fence customers and, and just um, keep keep us in their mind uh, for when they come to, um, to buy again. But I always think the best thing you can do to not have to spend huge amounts of market on uh, money on marketing and and spend a lot of time keeping in touch with customers you just produce amazing products if you if you produce something good enough people and people know about you people will buy again they they won't go elsewhere 
Um, there's certain things we're producing aren't good enough yet that people are going elsewhere, but my aim is to just keep everything driving up and up and up until um, you know, people have got no choice. If they want the best, they're going to come to us. That, that's my goal. Um, when hopefully we get there. I, I've tried my best to get there. Um, but I'd like all our products to be kind of regarded in the way our, our dumbbells are, as you know, a really top product that, okay, costs a little bit more, but the value you get is, is phenomenal. So yeah, I like that. And also going back to the, uh, what was the book, The Pumpkin Principle? The Pumpkin Plan. The Pumpkin Plan. The Pumpkin. So you, you've already realized from reading the book, The Pumpkin Plan, and reevaluating things, that you've kind of come full circle of, okay, we're going to focus on what we do good and make it even better. And the stuff yeah. that we're not quite as, but it's still in our wheelhouse, we're going to focus on improving that. And you've got that good problem to have. You've got more business than you can even keep up with at, at that current time. It's not like someone could just order it off the website and it's going to be there delivered by Prime in a week. It's going to be ordered and you're going to have to plan ahead when you order uh, exactly. for those gym owners. I think it's a bit of a this. Time, but at the minute, lead time is very long. But um, if, if customers ordered some custom bit of kit and they got it two days later i think that would that would take away from the the fear of, of ordering something bespoke to you you know there needs to be that certain amount of time and we obviously need time to to produce things but when it gets up to three four months it's a bit long which is why we're always trying to drive it down um which is why we're building the new uh, machine shop factory now that's gonna that that will almost double our capacity so then we can we we can bring the um, lead time down, and then take on more more work to um, probably within a year be back up to uh, the four month mark. But um, it's a, it's a good problem to have. Yeah. So it's people also got to remember, Watson strength equipment. It's not your Honda Civic of gym equipment. You're looking at more of your Rolls Royce. You're looking at the very high quality very well made this stuff can survive a bomb blast it's very well put together the dumbbells i don't think you can break them if you can you're dropping it off the empire state building to break it uh like the stuff's so insanely well made is the only way to really describe it having used several different pieces of kit uh from your dumbbells uh i've used some of your specialty bars uh, like even all of the bars, it just feels solid. It doesn't feel like you ever have to worry about anything going wrong with it. Everything, if it's supposed to move like the dumbbells, they revolve very smoothly. There's no kind of clunkiness to the rotation. It's just once it starts spinning, it spins nicely. So it's you're paying for a very high quality on top of very high and raw materials that are machined, well made. So that's why. When you look at the price tag, and because that's an influencing factor, if you're looking for budget, Watson's not necessarily going to be the company for you. If you want the best made stuff that you're going to buy once, mm. Watson's the stuff to get when it comes to many pieces. Um, the, I think the other so thing, I would kind of, be, the other thing that's kind of kept us ahead as well is the customization. We we've gotten really down the customization route. I know for years people. Have, customized frame colors and upholstery colors, but we've taken it a few steps further with um, some of the materials we're using now. The, um, we've, we've used leather now, Italian leather for a few years. That works really well. We're now looking at Alcantara and different suede and things, which I was worried initially about how they work in a gym. Um, but we've tested them and they, they're incredible. Leathers, um, suede and things after, not a suede as you imagine a suede, more like an Alcantara style of suede. Um, as they wear, they just look better and better and have that real nice, in the right kind of environment, right kind of gym, like a maybe a high end PT studio, um, brick wall style gym. They, they just look phenomenal. It, look, it looks really, really good. Um, some of the laser cutting um, customization we're doing there is, is really good because gyms. Gyms want their logo. They don't necessarily want our logo on their stuff. They want their brand. Um, they want their clients to be taking pictures with 
dumbbells that have their brand on there. So I, I think it's been a good move to go really strongly down the customization route. And the, um, the machines we've invested in now means we can, we're in quite an unusual place in that we're small enough to really quickly change and adapt. Um, but we've got incredible um, um, manufacturing capabilities here. You know, we've got all the latest different types of laser cutting and CNC machines and uh, we're bringing robot welding and a lot of other robot um, feeding stuff into, into our processes. So we're, we've, we've got incredible um, um, ways of producing kit, but we're still small enough to quickly adapt and change. So um, that, that's quite unusual because either companies are generally very big and that's the way they do it. It's very hard to change. If somebody wants a machine 100 mil shorter, just can't do it. Um, or they're very small where they haven't got the capabilities of, of um, efficiently building big volumes of kit. So we're, we're in quite a unique place, I think. That, that's good to hear. So, all right. So from all of this that we've talked about today, if you could come down to a single priority for coaches, gym owners, trainers, just people looking to outfit their homes and whatnot, what would you say your number one statement priority would be for people when it comes to Watson? What they should be looking for when, when buying? Well, what would you say the number one thing people should be looking for when they're looking at Watson and other equipments, you know, manufacturers. Try before you buy. We always, always try and get people to come here. When, when people come here, they see what we're doing. They, they feel the, the, the kit. Because you can see things online, it's okay. But when people come here and then visit other places, I'm, I'm confident they would love what they see. So... Um, I know it's not easy for everybody, depending where you are in the world, but um, we've got a lot of gyms all over the world, so um, we can always get people into places that are fairly close to them. But try before you buy is, if you could be for the right, I mean, people may try stuff and not like it, which is, is, is fine as well. It's got to work both ways. You know, we, I wouldn't want a customer to buy from us. Yeah, in fact, the, the thing that I'd really, really hate and would keep me up at night is people buying things and just, Every time they look at it, I think, oh, I wish I didn't spend my money on that. I'd, that would really kill me. So I want people to be happy. So um, yeah, try try what they're buying. I'm sure they'll be happy, but if they're not, that, that's good too. So for those of you who don't know, Watson has their own gym. Uh, I'm not sure if it's nearby to the factory or if it's part of the factory itself, but they have their own gym for people who Watson, Simon and others will actually give you the tour of it and allow you to try out basically every piece of kit they make is pretty much inside of that gym. I missed it on the opportunity when I was in uh, the UK in 2019. Just timing just didn't quite work. But in the future, I plan to visit that place because, hey, it's like a kid in a candy store. Uh, so where is that gym exactly? So the gym, we're all based on a trading estate in, in Croom. So we've got our main factory, our main big factory. We've got a separate machine shop, which is a three minute walk away. Opposite the machine shop is the gym. So it's all very close together. The new factory we're building now is right next door to our main big factory. We're actually having a bridge linking the two together. So everything's, everything's very close. And we really encourage people to come here because it's, it is interesting. You can, you can try all the kit. You can come and see everything being made. We make amazing coffee. We're very fussy on our coffee. Um, if you're going to be here a while, we make some really good steak as well. So it's, it's a worthwhile trip to see it. So it will be even better when the, um, when the new factory is finished. Yeah, and if you're going to be spending 20, 30, 50, $100,000 on gym equipment, why not spend the two three thousand dollars on a trip to the UK? Go visit for a day, two days, try it all out, and then make your purchase. Uh, so, Simon, how can people get in touch with you, follow you, 
uh, as well as Watson Strength Equipment. So this is the part where you get to plug your uh, social channels and whatnot, uh, your contact info, uh, so that people can follow along, see what more of Watson, see what you do specifically as well, and get to know you, the person behind the company, even better. Okay, so the website is watsongym.co.uk or watsongym.com. Uh, Instagram is our main kind of social, which is at watsongym. I also do my own Instagram, which gives a more kind of candid look at what's going on in the factory and everything, which, which is at Watson Jim Simon. Uh, then our Facebook and uh, Facebook is Watson Jim Equipment. Um, and my email is simon at watsongym.co.uk, which people will get an automated reply to sending them off to various places. But I do see these emails. so. If anyone wants to speak to me, I will see it and I'll, I'll always get back to people. Yeah, so I'm just going to be saying thank you very much for taking the time today to uh, give more information, let people know more, uh, giving me the time of day for getting more people's eyes on Watson and getting to know the company better. So thank you very much for your time. Uh, hopefully people, when they see this, they're sold initially just to go take a look at the company's stuff and if they've never tried the stuff before and they're interested finding gyms that they can actually go and try out they're pretty well everywhere now uh many if it's not in a city near you or at your city there's going to be one close by mm. uh, so 